one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm back. I'd like to introduce you to the one and only Jesse James Dupree, lead singer of the world known Southern Southern rock band Jackal. But tonight he's with his side project, Jesse James Dupree and Dixie and. Incorporated. We're gonna ask many questions, but we, but we gonna start with what's happening here tonight. All right. Jesse, you wanna introduce yourself and tell our fans what's going on here tonight? Well, how could I top that introduction you just gave me? That was incredible. It's good to meet you, Miss Kennedy. We um. We're out, I, 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 as you said, I'm out doing some fun stuff. I'm out doing uh, music that uh, is a tribute to the kind of music that I grew up on. My, when I was growing up, my dad had an old Dodge Dart uh, car with a little AM radio up front with just one little speaker up in the dash and he'd listen to all that, that real country music like Johnny Cash and Charlie Pride and, 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 and Hank Jr. or Hank Williams, that was before Hank Jr. even, Hank Williams. And, and, uh, but anyway, so I just thought that I'd write some music and uh, that, that paid tribute to the to the real country roots that I grew up on. So that's what we're doing tonight, playing some songs that I wrote that sound like that music and pays tribute to it, and some of the songs that I grew up like Johnny Paycheck songs and Jerry Reed songs and that kind of thing. So it's just it's a lot of fun. And then of course Jackal still kicking, doing our thing. But um, but right now I'm just out having fun doing a solo thing, and then I'm back on the tour bus next week with Jackal. How did this side project, Dixie Incorporated, come about? Well, um, initially, um, I was uh, I was really getting hooked on uh, the Sirius XM. You, are you familiar with Sirius XM, XM radio? No. You never heard that? It's like a digital radio thing that you can have in your car, and they have all these really defined channels. And they had one that's nothing but just old. It's called Willie's Roadhouse. And it's just old vintage country stuff, and it's really great music. And I was listening to that, and I started hearing how cool the acoustic guitars are. And Roman, my bass player for Jackal, uh, he was noticing how cool the stand-up basses are the back in the old country music. So he got a stand-up bass, and I started. I grabbed an acoustic guitar because I always pretty much played electric. And once I got the acoustic guitar, and he had that, just started writing songs, and one thing led to another, and. My son plays drums. Have you met my son yet, mm -hmm. Nigel? You're gonna like him. He's a good looking little fella. He looks like his mama. <laughs> you look like, do you look like your mama or do you like your daddy? Um, I think I like my mom. You look like your mom, that's good. That's good. I, I think you probably do too. Either that or your real dad. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> Everybody knows your name. It's out there in so many ways. Mm -hmm. But the one people known the most is your the front man for the band Jackal. How has the ride been the last 20 years? Well, it's actually been more than 20 years. And I know it's hard for you to believe because I don't look like, I don't look that old, do I? <laughs> do, do I look that old? No. Oh, okay, good. Good answer. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I've been doing it. Uh, we, Jackal is about to celebrate its 30th anniversary together. That? No. Wow, yeah. So when we started, your mama was probably your age, <laughs> if you think about that. But uh, no, we uh, we uh, are celebrating 30 years, and it's been a great ride. We've uh, and we're not finished yet. I mean, the band is still as lethal as ever, and still having as much fun as ever. And I can still get to act like a 20 year old and jump around and power up and act crazy. I just I'm a little get. A little more getting slower in the morning, getting started the next day, you know, kind of. <laughs> but, but it's still a lot of fun. Jesse, when did you know music was gonna be your life? Did you ever imagine it would turn into a lifelong career? Well, I used to work construction work, building houses and pouring concrete on commercial buildings. And I used to look down at my hands and they'd be all cracked from the sulfur and calluses and cuts and bruises. And I used to look down and say, one day, my hands are not gonna look like that. So that was, 
my biggest motivation. And I still wake up every single day and I freak out for the first couple. I wake up and just freak out because I think, oh, no, it's all been a dream and I've got to go pour concrete today. And then when I realize it hadn't been a dream, I jump up and take a big bite out of life's rear end again. You ever wake up and just freak out? No. You ever just freak out? Okay. Well. <laughs> Someday. What was it like back in 1992 when your first album was released on Geffen? Geffen Records. It must have been exciting back in those days. You know, we were the last band to get signed right underneath the wire That when the music business used to be really crazy and out of control and and um, and, and it was, uh, we were very lucky and very blessed to have gotten signed when we did because I, I tell people we're, we were probably the last rock band to get signed when the music business was really crazy and fun. It was really crazy. And, and now, still crazy and fun, but it's, it's uh, because the record companies have kind of went away, it makes the bands have to be a little more responsible on the business side where they used to get just sign a contract and be rock stars and have money thrown at them. But a lot of those guys didn't end up so well because they they didn't really ever pay attention to their business. So some of them are are, are very lucky. They're, they're back working construction themselves now. But uh, I've been very blessed and uh, kind of got foot on both sides. I've always paid attention to the business, but but we've still been wild and crazy too. We're still wild and crazy. Don't I, don't I look wild and crazy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. That's a good answer. <laughs> In your career of music. What has been your biggest accomplishment? Uh, well, one of them is the fact that I'm still doing it. I mean, that's a, that, don't you think that's a pretty big accomplishment? Yeah. Yeah, but we've got so many. We've been so so fortunate. I mean, uh, I was uh, always proud that that um, you know that we got a chance to record and perform with the lead singer of ACDC, Brian Johnson, who's in, from ACDC, who's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, Daryl Mack from uh, Run, Run DMC. You like Run DMC? You don't like them? You, you, you're more of a rocker? Yeah. Yeah? You like ACDC? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, so, uh, but we, we've gotten to perform and write with a lot of the guys that were our heroes, a lot of guys that we toured with, so that's always been a lot of fun. I've always enjoyed that. And uh, just the fact we, uh, we uh, have a couple of Guinness Book World Records where we did like 100 shows in 50 days. And then we did 21 shows in a 24-hour period. Have you ever stayed up for 24 hours? Uh, and not went to sleep? No. No. No? You got to have your sleep? Do you like to sleep? No. Do you, do you like to wake up in the morning? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. So you don't want to just lay in bed and be lazy? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that is okay. <laughs> but the more you get, when you get, when you get to be a teenager, You'll be, they'll be hard pressed getting you out of here. You'll be wanting to sleep all the time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what's the next question you got there? Who is your biggest influence in life and why? Well, um, now that is a good question. Um, I have, uh, I've had so many good people in my life and uh, I've, uh, I've, a lot of the people that have been my biggest influence have been the people that didn't do so good and so they've they've shown me what not to do so maybe i better not say who those names are but but i pay attention to you can learn just as much from somebody that's failed and you can learn just as much personally as failing sometimes when you fail you just gotta you gotta turn those negatives into positives you know what i'm saying you can't you can't lay down and accept getting beat on something you got to figure out a way to turn it into a win and uh, so that's what i try to do turn negatives into positives Jesse, although you are quite successful looking back over the years, is there anything you would change if you could go back and do it all over? I don't think there's, I've been asked that before and I don't think I would change anything. I really don't think, I, I, I think it's all been a, a, an incredible journey and I'm, I'm, I, I'm not, I cannot complain. And uh, every, everything good and bad kind of makes you who you are. If it wasn't for music, where do you think you'd be today? Um, 
If it wasn't for music, where would I be today? That's a good question. I would probably be, I, if, I would probably be building houses. Hopefully I would have graduated up from not just having to tote the lumber. I hope that maybe I would have been a builder or you know somebody that was developing things. I like building stuff and I like, um, I like to, or I might've been running a bar. I might have, I like doing that. I've done that in my past and that was pretty cool. And um, just, it's something that, um, something that I enjoy doing because again, I, I like being in the entertainment business. I, I might have been, I might have been, um, maybe I'd have went into stand-up comedy or something. I don't know. I'd have probably done something. <laughs> Not only are you a rock and roll icon, but you have your own whiskey, whiskey and your own TV show. What's it been like to be so successful in so many things? Well, thank you for saying that. The TV show ran about six years, and the Full Throttle Saloon TV show, and we were uh, we were uh, documenting what it took for us to run the world's largest uh, biker enthusiast bar out in Sturgis, South Dakota. There's a big, big event that goes on out there, and we have like a million people show up, and they all show up for just one week. And the, the little town's normally 5,000 people, and this little bitty town gets overrun by a million people. And they go out and camp on the prairie out there in the middle of South Dakota where it's beautiful. And you're right there beside Mount Rushmore and Crazy Horse and Deadwood and Devil's Tower. And they come out there, and when they come out there, they like to have a cold beverage. And I like to, I like to turn them on to some Jesse James bourbon. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's a good brown liquor, but you don't need to be talking about it. You just need to stay away from that stuff. Because it's liquor's, liquor's a whole other level of crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> you've been a part of some big music shows. What's the largest show you ever played, and where was it at? Um, I, I think it's probably a Woodstock '94, and there's like well over a half a million people in front of us, and it just the people there's so many people that just look like an ocean. You know, the ocean just kind of waves. You know, when you look, it kind of rolls up and down. You look at, I don't know, you've been to the ocean before? Um, I think so. You think so? I think you need to tell your mom and dad you need to go to the ocean. See what a half a million people look like. That's what it, that's what it looks like. If you're not on tour, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? I like to ride my Harley Davidson motorcycle. And I like to ride. You ever ridden a motorcycle? No. Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's, they're incredible. And uh, I like to ride my Harley Davidson motorcycle. And um, and I used to take a lot of trips on the motorcycle. And um, but it's been so crazy busy with all the other things we've had going on lately. I'm, I actually I'm overdue to go take a good long trip on my motorcycle. And but I do like riding. We do a lot of charity motorcycle rides throughout the year. And I'm, I've been working with the VFW organization, the Veterans of Foreign Wars our men and women that are soldiers that the army and air force and navy you know who all those guys are um, yeah. yeah yeah and um they're a real they're the real heroes out there and i we like to raise money for those guys so we'll do charity motorcycle rides because some of them have, have been injured and they have problems or they find themselves in financial trouble from being deployed and sent overseas to live for a while and their families are back here struggling and stuff so we try to help them out through the vfw organization and people can text the word needs, N-E-E-D-S. You ever text? Yeah. Yeah, you text. You can text the word needs, N-E-E-D-S, to 20222. And you make a donation to the VFW and it helps our soldiers. Where or what do you see yourself doing in the years to come? New music coming our way? I'm hoping so. We, I'm always writing, and we're always. Um, it's Jackal's 30th anniversary coming up, so I think we need to put some new music out for the 30th, don't you? Because that's, that's a big celebration, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll probably be doing something like that. And hopefully, I'll just keep playing. I hope I don't ever have to stop playing. I like it. Jesse, is there anything else you want to tell your fans out there before you have us? to go rock our faces off? Well, the first thing is I tell you to be ready to come out here to Pierre's tonight because that's where we're playing at Pierre's in Portland with Jesse James Dupree and Dixie Inc. And again, we're going to turn Pierre's into a honky-tonk tonight. And uh, 
play a few jackal songs, but put, put a little different twist on it. I got my son playing drums. I told you about that. Roman's playing the bass, and got a great guitar player named Kenny that's that's absolutely incredible for this kind of music. And so, come out and check that out. And then the other thing I'd have to say is this is probably my favorite interview I've ever done. You've done a great job. You've done a great. You like doing the interviews? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse, for sitting here and taking the time. Much love. And so we meet again. Until we meet again. Oh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> You did great. It's so good to meet you, and thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Hmm. Will you do it again, one with me again sometime? Maybe. Huh? Maybe we can do one like every year of your life? I want to. Yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be fun. Well, thank you very much, Kitty. Much luck to you. Continued success. Hmm, I will. Spread the word. Share this link. We'll get Miss Kennedy out there. She needs to be worldwide. Worldwide. Bigger than she already is. She's already you're pretty big. How many hmm. followers do you have? Um, hundred thousand. A lot. A lot. That's a lot. Well, we got to spread the word, share this link, and uh, support Kennedy because she loves music and she's got a jackal patch right there. So you know she's not nothing but all good right there. <laughs> Give me some knuckles. Bam! All right. Front row Kennedy. Front row Kennedy. Right there she is. Pa pow! <laughs>